Now is former assistant HHS secretary Admiral Brett Girard. Before we get your take, I do think it's important just for everybody to hear from the president directly. President Biden said this yesterday. I don't believe that I do thus far. We're checking that. We, but there are on federal workforce. People should understand. Seeing little kids, I mean, four or five, six years old, in hospitals on ventilators. And some of them passing, not many, but some of them passing. I should not characterize beyond that. Nobody wants to see little kids in the hospital on ventilators. Um, do you think that these mask mandates would be helpful for teachers and students as they get back to classes, or is it not necessary? What's your opinion? Well, my first opinion is this is a big distraction, and it's really uh, just a big excuse from the Biden administration. 100,000 children did get COVID of last week. Not a single one of them got it from a classroom because classrooms aren't there. This is a failure of the vaccine rollout by the Biden administration, a tanking of all testing. The messaging has been inconsistent, incomplete, and incoherent, and they're not even doing simple things like getting the vaccine approved. If you want to keep children safe, you've got to get the vaccination and testing out there. The discussion about schools is important, but it's theoretical, and it's missing the main point, and that is a failure of Biden to do the basic things to protect well, children. In the meantime, you're going to have this debate, maybe even have a court fight. I mean, it seems that, like, based on some of that answer yesterday afternoon, that that's where this could be headed. A Washington, D.C. health official, they're saying we're very hopeful Hopeful. We'll get back to normal around the holidays. We're hopeful that by Thanksgiving we'll be in a different spot, but that relies on people getting vaccinated. What is your view on that? What is your view now on what seems to be the emerging logic, and that is COVID is going to be with us for a while, maybe even a few years, and there could be various um, variants that come into American and global society between now and, say, over the next year or two. It's very hard to understand Washington, D.C. Uh, the mayor should be congratulating the citizens, not repressing them further. Their adult vaccination rate is 76 percent, much higher than the national average. They've had three deaths in the last two weeks. And out of the 2,200 available hospital beds, they're only admitting seven patients with COVID per day on average. So D.C. is doing well. They need to open up D.C. In terms of uh, variants, I, I think it is really possible um, we're not going to go to zero on COVID. There is going to be baseline with variants, particularly among people uh, who are immunosuppressed or who are elderly. So getting to zero is not the goal. Minimizing hospitalizations and deaths are the goal, and we're rapidly getting there. Admiral, you said that you, in your characterization, the Biden administration has failed on the vaccine rollout. 31% um, uh, of people say they are more likely to get the vaccine if it is fully approved by the FDA. Do you think that actually will happen soon? And do you think that that is true, that people will actually then be more willing to get the vaccine? So I want to say, first of all, I have every confidence in the safety and effectiveness of the vaccines and encourage people to get it. But yes, 30 percent of people who have not been vaccinated want to see that approval. The data has been sitting on the FDA's desk since the first week in May for Pfizer and only a couple weeks later for Moderna. There is no reason that this has not been approved already. Pfizer, we've given over 200 million doses. We have enormous safety uh, information. And Biden needs to do simple things like Let's nominate an FDA commissioner. How could you be in the middle of a pandemic where vaccines are the most important way out? And not only do we not have an FDA commissioner, but he hasn't even nominated one. So we need to get the vaccines approved. We need leadership in the FDA. It can't be a nameless, faceless bureaucracy. So let's do the easy things, the right things, before we start debating about theoretically what might happen in Texas in a few weeks. I'm telling you right now, I believe in school, masks or not, are much safer for children than they are in the community. The community is where they're getting infected. Wow. Okay, I, I just had one just follow up on that, sir. Um, for, for those people who are concerned about the long-term possible consequences or side effects of this vaccine, what would you say to those people who are concerned? You said that you have confidence in the vaccine. Um, how, would you, how do you talk to them about that a little bit unknown? 
So the vaccine has been so politicized and they, they had so much doubt cast, including by Biden and, and the vice president uh, during the, the campaigns. I understand their concern, but we have given over 200 million doses in the U.S. worldwide among all vaccines, over 4 billion doses. And if you see a side effect, it's going to be within the first two or three weeks. It's not going to be two or three years. So um, we know exactly what those side effects are. Um, they're not zero, but they're very minimal, and the risk of COVID is so much worse than getting a vaccine, yes. 1,000, 10,000 times worse. So you can be confident that there's not going to be long-term side effects. They're only in the short term, and the risk-benefit for adults uh, over 18 is certainly proven. Well, great stuff. Thank you, Admiral. Uh, we got 100 more questions. Come back <laughs> soon, okay? Brett, you're right. Thank, thank you. you for that. A few things to follow up on.